Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential homemade equation with complex numbers, <laughs> a lot of words. So anyways, um, I call this homemade because I kind of came up with the idea, but guess what? Uh, someone else might have come up with the exact same idea because these are not too hard to come up with if you know some formulas. Anyways, this is a nice problem in my opinion. Please let me know what you think. We have e to the power x equals cosine i minus i sine i. So very, very complex right-hand side. So what is cosine i? What is sine i? i is obviously not a real number. But do you think x is going to be a real number at the end? Make some guesses and then we'll check them out. Okay, cool. So let me go ahead and introduce Euler's formula that is phenomenal, amazing, outstanding, incredible. It's just incredible. Euler is incredible. That's why he's, the stuff that he came up with is just amazing, unbelievable. Anyways, I'll be presenting two methods. And allow me to start with the first one. Okay, that should be a surprise, right? Most of the time we start with the first method. I know there's a huge argument like if you introduce the second method first, that becomes the first method, but that's not actually the case in my opinion. Anyways, so my first method is going to use Euler's formula. And what is it? The Euler's formula is cosine alpha. Alpha is just an angle, real or complex. I sine alpha equals e to the power i alpha. Now, notice that this is nice and this you can use Taylor's theorem to prove this if you expand e to the power i alpha and then separately do cosine and sine you're going to notice that the terms of e to the i alpha can be split into two groups the ones that have i in them and the ones that don't and they just happen to satisfy this equation which is amazing i can, i i don't know i i'm out of words for this so now if you replace alpha with negative alpha this is what's cool about this because you can replace alpha with anything then you're going to get something like cosine of negative alpha plus i sine negative alpha is going to be e to the power i negative alpha. I'm just going to write it as negative i alpha. So this is really, what's really cool about it, but what happens? Cosine is an even function, which means it's just going to absorb the negative, just like this. And sine is an odd function, which is going to spit out the negative, so it's going to look like this. That's how I taught my students. I don't know. Sorry, if that's gross. Um, so I'm going to take it with the first equation together and take a look at this. What does this call for? Doesn't this call for? <laughs> yes, it does. It very much does. Look at this. I'm going to add these up. These guys are going to cancel out. And I'm going to end up with 2 cosine alpha is e to the i alpha plus e to the negative i alpha divided by 2. And forget about this. Awesome. So this gives me cosine alpha, which is very nice because when you're trying to evaluate something like cosine alpha, I? What? It's like cosine pi over 4 you can find easily, right, on the unit circle. But cosine i is not to be found anywhere except for this one. So that's cosine. Let's go ahead and do the sine. And sine is going to be easy. You just have to, well, not that way. Because of the way I wrote it, man, I should have written it differently anyway. You're going to subtract this way. And that's going to give you the following. Uh, cosine is going to cancel out. You're going to get i sine alpha minus minus i sine alpha. That's going to give you 2i sine alpha equals e to the i alpha minus e to the power negative uh, e to the power negative i alpha and divide it by 2i and you'll get sine alpha. Awesome. We got our formulas, so we're ready to rock and roll. Let's go ahead and do it. But what is cosine i from here? Easy. Replace alpha with i and you're good to go. So cosine i is going to be e to the power i i, which is i squared, plus e to the power negative i squared, divided by 2. Let's go ahead and work it out. i squared is what? Negative 1. Yeah, by definition, if you just need to learn one thing about complex numbers, this should be, it should be this one. And negative i squared is going to be 1. This is 1. So we're going to get e to the power negative 1. Pardon, I'm sorry. This is supposed to be negative 1 e to the power of negative 1, let's just write it as e plus 1 over e divided by 2. If you make a common denominator, you're going to get e squared plus 1 divided by 2e. Okay. Now, this is cosine i, and as you can see, it is very, very real. Okay. So hopefully you believe that. And 
Now sine i, sine of i, is going to be from here, we're going to get e to do i squared minus e to the power of negative i squared divided by 2i. And then we're going to work it out, don't worry about it, uh, we're just going to work it out a little bit. This is negative 1 again, this is positive 1 again, and it's going to be like this time 1 over e minus e divided by 2i, and that's going to be 1 minus e squared over 2ie. Okay. IE just reminds me of Internet Explorer, but I don't want to remember that. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, simplify this a little bit. I don't want the I at the bottom. So I want to multiply by negative I. I know some people multiply by I, but I multiply by negative I because I like to do things differently, you know. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, when I distribute this, I'm going to be getting something like negative I. and then multiply by 1 minus, well, I probably want to negate it, but I can do it later, no worries, divided by 2e negative i squared. So here's what's beautiful about negative i squared, is negative i squared is positive 1, so I can totally forget about it. Oops, never mind. I'm like, what? Well, this is 1, so I, I can totally forget about it. And now I do have another i, which I forgot to, wait, wait a minute. Did I mess up on this something? Okay, anyway, so, um, yeah, we're, we're, go we're going to have an i in the answer, uh, absolutely. But that's going to disappear later. Okay, so, if I negate this product, uh, then I get something like i times e squared minus 1 over 2e. I don't know if it was necessary, but anyways, this is sine i. Now, let's go ahead and evaluate cosine i minus i sine i from here. Cosine i, we already know, e squared plus 1 over 2e and i times sine i is going to be i, another i, this. i squared is negative 1, so cancel those out and make this a plus sign, and you're good to go. Awesome. This is going to give you what? e squared plus 1 plus e squared minus 1 divided by 2e, or not 2e. 1 cancels out, we end up with 2e squared divided by 2e, and that is going to be e. Wow. That's amazing, right? We got something super duper simple, e to the power x equals e. So cosine i minus i sine i is just e. Wow, that's crazy, isn't it? That's real. Okay, cool. So we got this equation, and how do we solve it, right? Let's go ahead and write this e in polar form. We can basically multiply it by 1, which can be written as a complex number in polar form as e to the power 2n pi i. Remember i times theta, and this is our angle, theta, multiples of 2 pi is going to give us 1 all the time, because on the unit circle you're at 0, make another rotation, so on and so forth. Make sense? And from here, obviously, this is first power, e to the x becomes e to the power 1 plus 2n pi i, and from here, x becomes 1 plus 2n pi i. If you said the answer is complex, you're totally right about that. And can you find the modulus for this number? I'm pretty sure you can. Anyways, let's go ahead and continue with the second method. And please let me know which one you like better. Second method is the following. We're obviously going to use the same formula, e to the i alpha equals cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. Now remember, we have cosine of i minus i sine i. And as before, we can basically, oops, I wrote it as alpha. So we can go ahead and write this as cosine of negative i plus i times sine of negative i because of the even and odd functions, right? So from here, alpha becomes negative i, right? And what do we say about cosine alpha plus i sine alpha? We said this is equal to e to the power i alpha. But if alpha is negative i, then just replace alpha with negative i, i times negative i, that's going to become e to the power negative i squared, which is e to the power 1. So cosine alpha minus i sine i, I'm sorry, I'm kind of rushing through this. Slow down, slow down. Cosine i minus i sine i is equal to e to the power 1, which is e. But this is also equal to e to the x. And from here we get the same equation and get the exact same solution as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.